Hello YouTubers, it's Michelle and I am here for my first cooking video and really it's relatively going to be easy the first night. Um, this is going to be a what's for dinner and tonight is Saturday night. We were supposed, when I say we, that's me, um, was supposed to have um, smash burgers. I was going to make smash burgers on the stove top. But I had to do some grocery shopping today, and by the time I got all that done, I was so tired, did not feel like doing anything. So instead, we're going to make dinner easy tonight, and this is what we're going to have instead. It is the Great Value Beef Ravioli, and in my opinion, it is the best ravioli. Um, it's better than the little guy with the chef hat. You know who I'm talking about. Um, I believe it's better than that. So, um, it's been really hard to find during this pandemic. <laughs> and, um, the last couple of times that I went to Walmart, they had had it. Which is a good thing. So, we're going to make that. And along that, we are also going to have... As you can see, some French bread there. I've got to put that in the oven. Um, I think it is the great value French bread. I'm not sure. It's either great value or ruler bread. but Either way, it's both good. So you just put it in there for, um, let's see, three minutes, I believe. Whoops. Leave it to me. Put it in there for three minutes on each side. So, while that's cooking up in the stove, we're going to heat up our yummy beefaroni. Or, well, it's not beefaroni, it's beef ravioli. Beefaroni is actually different. But, yes, this stuff is really, really good. So, make sure we get all the little raviolis out of there. And, I'm hungry tonight. So, I'm going to have two kids. And trust me, I will eat it all. Now, I'm going to warn you guys, when that timer goes off, you're going to hear Jackson, my fur baby, bark. He... As he's gotten older, his ears have gotten way more sensitive. And so, <sighs> we're going to hear him bark a lot on videos. <laughs> Let's put it that way. So, I'm going to put some water in this can. Kind of swish it around a little bit. Get some of the juices in there. Just to add... A little bit of juice to this ravioli so it doesn't sit on the bottom and burn in the pan. Or burn in the pan. I don't like to add a whole lot of juice or a whole lot of water. So I don't like to water it down. So that should be enough. Then we're gonna turn the burner on and easy peasy I mean how much more simpler can you get than opening a can and put it in the pan or yeah opening a can and put it in the pan and heat it up but I guess since this is my first what's for dinner video um <laughs> And just like our 
perfect timing. I told you he would work. So we're going to take out our bread. It's just me eating, so it's not going to matter that I touched this bread. So we're just going to flip it. Put it in there for another three minutes on the other side, and then it will be done. Jackson, it's okay. Okie dokie. So there's that. And tomorrow night was supposed to be meatloaf. So... Everything has gotten pushed back tonight. So tomorrow we will do the smash burgers and french fries and possibly some fried squash. And depending on how uh, eager I get. But definitely we will be doing smash burgers and french fries. Not sure about the squash yet. And then, Monday night, sorry, my days are all, like, smashed together because of everything that's going on in the world. Um, Monday night, we will do my meatloaf, corn on the cob, and, um, pr oh, potatoes. Mash are not mashed, but baking potatoes, loaded baking potatoes. Yum, yum, yum. So, I'm going to wait for all this to get done, and once it's done, I'll show you what it looks like plated up. It's not going to be much, but you'll see. Okay, guys, so this is it plated up, and yes, my. Texas toast got a little burnt. <laughs> um, I left it in there for three minutes on each side. The first time I left it in there, it wasn't too bad. The second side, eh, it kind of burnt. So, probably should have left it in there for maybe three minutes and then turned it maybe two minutes. But, I like it crispy, so I'll eat it. And that's my ravioli. And then I have cottage cheese on the side. And... Let me know. Do you guys think it's weird to eat cottage cheese with salt and pepper on it? I've always ate cottage cheese like that growing up. Um, it was just how we ate it. We always ate it with like spaghetti and pastas and stuff. So, I don't know. I know a lot of people when I tell them, you know, that I put salt and pepper on my cottage cheese, they think it's weird. So, <laughs> and they think it's weird that I eat it with pasta, which I don't know why it's so weird because... A lot of people put, like, um, cottage cheese or ricotta cheese in their, like, lasagna and stuff and pastas and stuff. So, I don't know why it's so weird to just eat it on the side, but maybe the salt and pepper is weird. I don't know. But, like I said, it's just something that I've grown up with. And so, it's the Prairie Farms, small curd. Don't want that big chunks. No, 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 no. It's got to have the little, cur the little curds. And... And then I'm just going to put some of this Kraft um, Parmesan cheese. It's actually a three, or what is it? Three cheese blue, but it's like Parmesan. So I'm going to pour some of that on there. Kind of juice it up, you know. Because dinner is pretty, pretty, pretty darn simple tonight. So that's it. So, stay tuned for the next meal on the plan. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye. Okay, so it is Sunday, and I am going to cut up the squash that I got at the grocery yesterday. And there were four in there, and I'm going to bag each one individually after I cut them up. Um, so that'll give me like four different servings, I think, because I usually slice these pretty thin. So, um, one should do me. I was going to do two, but I think one will be okay. Um, I was also going to say, 
I absolutely love this knife here. Um, it came in a set, I believe, of five from HSN, and it's by Cuisinart. And it's a ceramic-coated knife. This is my second set that I've had. And the only thing that I can say as far as a drawback is because it's ceramic, um, sometimes you have the ceramic start to peel. So then when it starts to peel, of course, you don't want to use it because you don't want that to contaminate your food. So that's why I bought the second set. But out of the set, like I said, I think it's a five-piece set. This is the knife that I use the most. Um, I think in my first set, there's I don't even know that I used any of the other knives, actually, to tell you the truth. And in this set that I got, I know I haven't. It's only been this set here, or this knife here. And also, this one that I got, it also came with, um, oh, um, some little cutting boards and stuff. But I don't use them. I prefer this one here. But it did come with, like, four or five different, like, um, thin cutting boards where you could use one for, like, vegetables, one for, um, chicken, you know, different ones for different things. But I like this cutting board here. And, um, I believe this set was only, like, nineteen ninety nine, So, very, very inexpensive. So, I've already washed these. And I like to cut the ends off. So, there we go. And then, like I said, I just like to cut it very thin because it goes further. And I just don't like it real chunky. So, I like a lot of batter on mine. So, probably not the healthiest, you know. It's like more like I'm eating batter. I'll have a little bit of um, squash with my batter, I guess, you know. <laughs> but, yeah, definitely good. So when I get, oops, I get all of this cut up. Got some pick it up that I need to do around the house. And then I'm going to get started on supper, which is going to be um, Smash Burgers. Yum, yum, yum. <laughs> Cannot wait. So... That's what I'm doing right now, and I will be back later to share how I fry this stuff up. It's pretty simple, just uh, dip it in an egg wash and then dip it in cornmeal. A lot of people dip it in flour, I prefer cornmeal. And then as I fry it, I add salt and pepper um, to it while it's frying in the oil. I uh, deep fried and vegetable oil. So, but I will show it. Plus, I'll show the smash burgers and, um, what else was it I was going to make? Oh, fries. I'll probably make those in the air fryer. So, I'll be back later to share that. Bye-bye. We're going to start on the fried squash right now. I've got, let's see, I've got the vegetable oil in the pan. It's heated up. My squash is over here in one of these containers. I have just a couple of eggs. And then in this other container is just some white, um, oh, pork milk. So all I do is just basically drop the piece in there and cover it real good and then just put it in the pan fry. Very, very simple. I 
I don't season anything until I get it in the pan. And then once I've got it in the pan going, then I'll just add some salt and pepper. And then when I flip it, I add salt and pepper on the other side. So I'm very simple with my seasonings. I don't feel like it needs anything. Good with just salt and pepper. Sometimes I think we over season things when we don't have to. And uh, so yeah. minutes on each side. So within about 10 minutes you're pretty much done. And uh, this here was one squash. So you know you get quite a few pieces if you cut it thinly and stuff. It goes quite a ways. And it's so so good. May not be quite the healthiest, but it is good. So I'll show it a little bit later, plate it up with our burger and french fries. Okay guys, we're gonna start the french fries. We're gonna do it over here on my air fryer and before I do that I'm going to spray it with a little bit of vegetable oil and I have these uh, sprayers that I got off the QVC that I can put my oil in it doesn't take up nearly as much oil just spray up a couple of good times Whoops. Kinda. Okay, so then I do that, and then we're gonna come back here, get some salt. And it's just the, let's see, the Great Value Crinkle Cut fries that I'm using. So, we're going to open up. Our, hey, Jackson, it's okay. We're going to open up our lid. Pour the fries in there. Give it a good shake. He knows, he knows it's getting ready to be. Okay, Jackson, it's okay. So, let's see. I'm going to turn it on. Turn it on the fries. Hit the button. And there we go. So, next up, we're going to start on the burgers. Okay, guys, we're about to make the smash burgers. So, I have some hamburger meat here. It's ground beef. It's 73. Um, I think it's 73. Let's see, what is it? Ah. 
7327, I think is what it was. Um, and I've heard that the leaner the meat, the better for a hamburger. So, um, got this. And then I'm just going to use some of this Tony's Creole. I'm going to spray that on there or shake some of that on there. And after I put them in, and then this is also some garlic powder. Um, woo! Um, after I put it in there, and I flip them, then I'll season them on the other side. And then we're just going to have salt and pepper. Okay, I'll be right back. I'm going to put them on the stove and we'll see how it goes. So here's the finished smash burgers here. I actually made four. Two of them kind of fell apart. So it was kind of like a halfway fail. This is the first time I ever tried smash burgers on the stove top. Um, it's actually the first time I've ever tried smash burgers at all. Um, you really need, I don't know what it is that they use, but it looks kind of like a flat iron. And um, that's what they use to press it down. I don't have the actual tool that they use, but I thought I could use this, which is like a hamburger press that I got like at the Dollar Tree, um, and between that and just a flat uh, spatula, but it didn't work quite as good as I thought it would, um, because you're limited to space in your skillet, and uh, it was a mess, so I did not film it. Um, because I didn't want you guys to see that mess. It was like, yeah, it was a hot mess. So, I'm going to plate this up, and I'll show you what everything looks like all together. So, here it is. I'll plate it up. Looks delicious. Can't wait to try it. Um, cannot wait to try out this brioche bun. I've never had them before. And, oh, it looks so, so good. Um, I'm a plain kind of cheeseburger girl, so I just like cheese on my burger, and that's it. And, um, if I'm going to have a pickle, I want it on the side. So, that's what's for dinner tonight. Thanks for watching. Okay, it is Tuesday, and we are going to make meatloaf, loaded potatoes, and corn on the cob. So I'm going to show you how I make my meatloaf. I've already put, let's see, the recipe I've cut in half. So what I'm telling you, um, if you want to make it a larger recipe, you double it. But usually when I do the regular recipe, it makes like two loaves. So I just need one. So I'm just going to cut it in half. So I've used a pound of ground beef and a half a pound of pork sausage. I've already got that in there. Um, then I've sliced up some onions and some bell peppers. So it calls for a half onion and a half a bell pepper. And there's probably more than that here. Because, I mean, I really only need a half or a fourth a cup. So probably not going to use all of this. That's all I'll use. Then I'm going to use one egg. So, again, the recipe would actually call for two. So, I'm going to pour the egg in there. And then it calls for a half a teaspoon or, yeah, a half a teaspoon of mustard. And I'm just going to go ahead and put the half a teaspoon in there. So do that and then it calls for 18 saltine crackers so 
I'm using Ritz crackers. That's what I have, so it really doesn't matter. It. I'm going to actually use 12, so. And I'm just going to crush them with my hands. Wash my hands real quick. Alright. So I've got my hands washed and now I'm just gonna put my mixer down, lock it in place. Turn it on, mix it up real good. You don't want to over mix it. I love using my KitchenAid so that I don't have to touch the meat. Although it really doesn't bother me. I know a lot of people are Ooh, yuck. <laughs> okay, so that should be pretty good. Unlock it, lift it up. Yeah, that looks really good. Okay. I'm going to turn this off. I'm going to mix this up real good with my hands, too. Um, and then I'm going to form it into a loaf and put it in the loaf bowl or in the loaf pan, and I'll show you what that looks like. I'll be right back. Okay, guys, this is what it looks like when it's all uh, formed into the loaf, and I've just put it in a glass. This is actually a lock and lock. I get these from QVC. Absolutely love them. Um, I love their glass bowls because they also come with like lids that are airtight that, you know, when you're uh, wanting to save leftovers and stuff, which there will be leftovers of this, I just put the lid on it, pop it in the refrigerator. So, cannot say enough good things about the Lock and Lock brand at QVC. So, I put it in there. I'm not going to cover it. Um, put it in the oven at 350 for an hour and then I take it out and then I put a half a cup of regular ketchup on top and then I put it in there for another 15 to 20 minutes until it kind of gets a little brown and stuff and the ketchup forms like a glaze over the top. So that is it with that. are going to make baked potatoes. So, I've already washed my potatoes. So, all I have to do is wrap them in some foil. So, wrap these up real good. And I'm making several because I know I'm going to have leftovers. And um, I like to just eat a good loaded potato sometimes. So I'm actually going to make three. Because again, it is just me. So No large family or anything to cook for. So, oh. what happened there? I must have grabbed the wrong piece. Was entirely too small. Okay. 
There we go. That's much better. And then I'm just going to take a fork and poke some holes in this. I've already poked holes in the potatoes before I wrapped them after I washed them real good. But I'm also going to poke several holes in them because I absolutely hate making baking potatoes and you go through all that time waiting for them to get done and they don't cook. So, and I even know that happens sometimes even when I poke holes in them. I don't know what makes that happen, but if you know, Please tell me because me and my mom both have tried to figure that out. How do you know if your potato's going to cook all the way through? So, and I just put these in the oven on a cookie sheet. And I just bake them with, um... the meatloaf at the same temperature and if they're going to bake, they're done then by the time the meatloaf is done. So, here's our cookie sheet. Or actually, it's my pizza pan, but I use it for everything. So put them on there, and then I'm going to put them in the oven, and then I will be back in a little bit to show you how I do my corner of the cob, and then we'll see everything. I'll plate it up. Thanks for watching. Okay, guys, there's my meatloaf after it's been in the oven for an hour, and so now I'm just going to use some of this ketchup, just regular ketchup. And it calls for half a cup. I'm just going to kind of eyeball it. Let's see. Just one second. I got my spoon out. So oh. I, hey, it's all right. I'll get my spoon out there. So once I pour it on there. Oh. Kinda spread it out. And when you do take it out, after it's been in there for an hour, um, there will be a lot of juice and stuff. So I do drain all the juice off of it. Good to go now. So we'll put this back in the oven um, probably for another 15 minutes. to show you 
right now what how I do my corn. So we're gonna turn around here. And over here is my corn on the stove. I have two corn um two corn on the cob. And what I do is I fill the pan with water and then I put a fourth a cup of milk in there. And I'm going to let it come to a boil. And then once it boils, I'll let it boil for probably six to eight minutes. And in case you're wondering why the wooden spoon is across there, I put a wooden spoon across my pan when I'm going to boil water or anything. And it prevents it from boiling over. Now, I've heard some people say that it doesn't work for them, but... I've always had good luck with this, so always works for me. So that's how I do my corn on the cob. So we will be back, and when we come back, you'll see everything all plated up and what it looks like. Okay, guys, this is my plate all plated up, my piece of meatloaf, my potato. I peel my potatoes, and then I put uh, salt and pepper and butter and sour cream and sometimes i'll put bacon bits on there but i wouldn't fill in the bacon bits tonight so just butter and sour cream salt and pepper and then my corn on the cob then i cut off the cob and put lots of butter and salt and pepper on so that's what's for dinner can't wait to go dig in Okay, guys, it's Friday, and guess what's for dinner tonight? I bet you you can guess just by the ingredients sitting out here on my countertop. So you said tacos. Yep, you're absolutely right. We are going to have open-faced tacos with a side of the Nor Fiesta side of Spanish rice. And some of the old El Paso um, refried beans. So that's what's for dinner tonight. Um, I've already got the ground beef on the stove. I've already got it um, browned up. I've got the rice going. Um, and I've got some of the refried beans going as well. Um, back here, it be, oops, sorry about that. That was the lid to my pan. It fell in the sink. Um, back there you'll see some Orida Krispy Crowns. I use these for my tacos, and you'll see how I do it. I um, absolutely love these things. Um, they're, they kind of look like a tater tot, I guess, but they taste way better than a tater tot. And you don't like tater tots. So, um, yeah, you'll see what I do with these. I use these a lot in cooking, um, especially when you would normally use, like, tater tots or something. But these are so, so good. We actually have a restaurant called Taco um, Taco John's. And um, I believe it's a locally owned uh, restaurant. And anyway, they have what they call... Um, golly, I cannot think of what they call their things. Uh, potato Olays, that's what they call them. And that's what these remind me. They remind me of their potato Olays. They're so, so good. So, um, yeah, we're going to get off here and I'll show you what everything looks like on the stove. Okay. Okay, so here is everything on the stove. There's the ground beef. There's the rice going. And there is the refried beans back there. Um... Basically, all you have to do to the rice is just to add a little bit of vegetable oil and water and wait until it starts boiling and then turn it down and simmer it on the stove. And this is the actual rice that I use right there. So, so good. So, let's get to cooking. Okay, we're back, guys. Okay, like I said, I don't know if I said in the previous clip or not, but the ground beef has already been browned and it's been drained, so now we're going to add our taco seasoning. And I get just this package here. It's from my ruler. It's the Kroger brand. So I pour that whole thing in there.
And then I love the old El Paso sauce, the taco sauce, like the mild. So I pour a little bit of that in there. And then I pour just a little bit of water. We'll see how this is. And I've got the crispy crowns in the oven. They go in the oven for about 18 minutes. And the rice started boiling so I had to turn it down and cover it on the stove um, and let it simmer for about seven minutes so you'll probably hear the timer go off here in a few minutes and if it does go off you'll hear Jackson barking because his little ears are very very sensitive to noises so Now it's looking really, really good. About the consistency that I like it. So I'm not going to add any more water, no more sauce. Just kind of let that heat up a little bit. Turn it down just a little. Okay. And that's pretty much it. I mean, pretty, pretty simple, and it's very, very good. So, I'm going to put the lid on this, let it simmer. Okay, guys, here it is. I'll plate it up. I'm sorry that. The last clip kind of got cut off. I got a phone call and it, it stopped my recording. So I'm new at this, guys, so be easy on me. But this is it. I'll plate it up. There you'll see the um, crispy crowns on my taco. Like I said, I haven't added um, sour cream. I will be adding sour cream to it, but I wanted you to see what it kind of looked like. And that's why I kind of call it an open taste taco. But these are so, so good. So, yeah, I definitely highly recommend trying it with the Krispy Crowns. Um, I don't think you'll be disappointed. And um, that's it. I'm going to go eat my dinner. Thanks for watching. Hey there, it's Saturday, and I'm not going to lie, it's going to be easy tonight. We're going to have the Tony's Pizza and the Tony Pizza Rose. Um, the Tony's is my favorite frozen pizza, and the Tony's Pizza Rose are my favorite by far pizza roll. I've tried other brands of pizza rolls, and to me, the knockoff brands, they taste like ketchup uh, from the like marinara sauce. So, the Tony's is my favorite so that's what's going to be for dinner tonight. I went grocery shopping earlier today, and I don't know about you, but it feels like when I'm gone, like I went out into a war zone or something. So when I come home, I'm completely exhausted, and I come home this evening and sat down in the recliner and fell asleep, and it's like almost 11 o'clock at night right now. So, having ate, I did have leftovers from yesterday, but it didn't sound so good. So, I'm going to put this in the oven, and then it looks like the leftovers for our tacos and stuff will be dinner tomorrow night. So, thanks for watching, and I'll be back with everything plated up. Goodbye. Just came out of the oven, getting ready to plate it up, and I'll show you what it looks like. Okay, guys, here it is. I'll plate it up. Looks super yummy. A few pieces of pizza, some pizza rolls, and a pickle on the side. Can't beat that for a Saturday night, late night dinner. So this is going to wrap it up for my what's for dinner this week. Please, please, please be, be nice in the comment section. Um, you know, know that this is my very first one, and I'm learning 
desperately learning how to do all this. So, I hope you enjoyed. I will try to leave links below for recipes such as the meatloaf and stuff like that down below. And, you know, I hope that you'll follow me through this journey as I learn how to do all this complicated stuff as I kind of see it. But um, I've totally enjoyed doing this, and I look forward to, um, you know, like I said, learning as I go. So I hope you enjoyed. I think I'm going to go in here and eat me this dinner, and I think I'm going to cave and give in to the Tiger King range and go uh, maybe binge watch that and uh, see what that's all about. So hope you enjoyed. Have a great week. Have a great day. And I'll see you later.